In this video, we're going to talk about factors and variables in the American culture that has been producing mass shooters since 1891. The first mass shooting in the United States happened in 1891. And we're going to talk about some of the contributing factors to what creates these mass shooters and why their population of mass shooters is starting to explode. One of the things I want to address from the previous video, there were people who were saying that these things don't happen nowhere else. Um, only in America do we have mass shootings. That's not true. Mexico has mass shootings. South America has mass shootings. Africa has mass shootings and they have worse atrocities and criminal acts in these countries. And to a degree, Pakistan, Turkey, our Saudi Arabia, they have these incidents going on in these countries as well, as well as the UK and Germany, because the UK and Germany has a similar culture, but we don't have these loose cannon factions that we have here in the United States. So we're, we're going to address the first problem or the first factor that creates these mass shooters, belief. Now this is something that has happened to me and it may have happened to you. You have a close personal friend and your pers close personal friend starts treating you funny because your pers per close personal friend has the um, concept or the ideal that you've done something to them or you've somehow offended them. They are operating on this belief and what they're doing is acting out upon you as if you have done something when in fact you've done nothing. So belief is one of the biggest and contributing factors to these mass shooters. Um, one of the things that is happening, and I'm about to say something that's gonna be very controversial, MGTOW and red pill are the beginning stages of mental illness. And I know it's like, that's a bold and a big statement, but let me break it down for you. What does MGTOW and red pill communities teach men? Anti-social behavior. They teach men not to trust women. They treat men, they teach men not to get married. They teach men not to have children. They teach men to not get in relationships. They teach men not to live with women. This goes against the God-given biological imperative that's been put in men and women. So they're teaching men to go against the grain of their biological imperative. Your biological imperative as a man is to get Sally pregnant. When you sitting there and you see Sally and Sally look good to you and then it's like, Shh, boing, that's your biological imperative. So they're teaching men to go against their biological imperatives. And this is why this is the beginning stages of mental illness. When someone goes out and commits a mass shooting, every time they get into the background of these guys, there's there's red flag after red flag after red flag after red flag. The U Valley shooter, this is what he used to do. He used to harass women online. He said this, once again, he said that all women need to be raped. And also with that, when I was doing the research, something else stood out that the girls online were used to this kind of behavior. And I'm gonna share something with you that my girlfriend shares with me all the time. Uh, because she's built a certain way, men, she's really pretty, men will come up to her and say, you'd be better if you lost five pounds. Off riff, off the riff. This is, I'm just sitting there like, why do people feel that they can approach you and say this stuff? 
or when you know she goes to the gym and she wears athletic wear um, she says she literally would have men stalking her and it's kind of wild because I was going ahead and reading the comments of the women that being raped uh, being harassed being threatened this was normal discourse online so let's go ahead and say that this behavior exhibited by young men online towards women is the beginning stages of mental illness you want to know why i'm about to share some stuff with you like remember what happened to me in october and how the internet was trying to cancel me and all these folks and i was just like what did i keep doing i kept making videos kept doing my things and eventually it died down let me tell you the majority of the people who were coming after me are mentally ill and you're like what i'm about to give you a graphic example when you don't care about something you put no energy into it you put no energy into it i don't watch youtube channels or youtube personalities that i don't like i give these people not a not even as five seconds of my time. I don't know what they're doing. I don't watch them. I don't follow them. I don't care about them. And this is the normal behavior of people who don't care about something, okay? So let's say you were walking down the street and you saw a pile of dog doo-doo. What do you keep doing? Mm. And you keep walking. But there's a certain type of person who will lose their mind because there's some dog doo-doo on the sidewalk. Let me tell you what one of my neighbors did years and years ago. Um, there was a girl that was living in an apartment and she had a dog and she would let the dog dump everywhere, right? This is what one of my neighbors did. They found the dog's doo-doo, they picked up the doo-doo, and they taped it to her door with a note stop letting your dog shit all over the place all right it's kind of wild right so a lot of these people who were coming after me and had things to say were mentally ill they're not they're not they, they're not they're not set right these are mentally ill people these are people in the beginning stages because mental illness isn't like an all-encompassing thing. It is something that matriculates and grows over time. And a lot of these people in the beginning stages of mental age, because some of these people are fascinated about me. I made a video talking about how I was thinking about suing these people. In the same video, I said, these people are broke. They have no money. So it would be a waste of time and effort. Guess what? Several of these people said, Glenn and Cameron's going to sue me. Even though I said I wasn't going to do it in the video. So this is where belief and the mental illness comes into an intersection where they meet. See, the mentally ill just need a little bit of belief to form a complete and whole action. One of the clowns made a complete video, even though I said in the video I wasn't going to do it. Didn't matter. And with these boys harassing these girls. And I'm gonna to explain to you why these boys are harassing these girls. And if you go back to Elliot, I can't remember his last name, his father was a movie producer. This was one of the incels. He would see beautiful white women with nice black guys. And he's like, why are you with him versus being with me? Why are you with him versus being with me? See, because they're mentally ill, they have no self auditing skills. They have no perspective. They have no, no scope, scale, no emotional intelligence. They're emotionally dumb and they're mentally ill, which is a bad, bad combination. Because this guy would see girls that he wanted, but didn't want him. And he could not figure out why he didn't want so we now have in mr lucario did a video which i greatly agree with and it's like why being a loser is cool 
And this is the camp. This is where the, the mental illness begins. Being a look, see, this is one of the things. If you don't want to do anything in life, you don't want to accomplish anything in life, you don't want to build anything in life, that's cool. But see, mental illness enters the room. Right now, you have a dude who's 5'5", 280, 350 pounds, and he is mad because that cute woman who's 5'2", 130 pounds, nice breast, cute face, nice fat booty, she's with a Chad or a Tyrone, and he cannot understand or appreciate why this woman doesn't want his broke, unaccomplished ass. Can't, can't understand it. And he's mad. He's like, she should be with me. No self auditing, no introspection skills, nothing. And this is one of the things that you're seeing and this is what's just growing. The incel community is growing. The mental illness community is growing. Now, some people took exception to my saying of comparing and putting mentally ill people in the worthless people category. I'm gonna stand by that statement and I'm gonna give you more uh, context. Let's say you're a mentally ill person on the street, you have paranoia and some other things, and you're on the street and you don't mess with nobody. You're just a homeless person. You're not contributing to society, but you're not tearing down society. You're still a worthless person because at any point, your mental illness can turn and then you can start tearing down society because you have that mental illness, you have that lack of awareness, you're living on the street, you are a worthless person because you don't contribute to society. That's the most benign worthless person. Let's talk about the guy who shot these kids in the U Valley shooting. This guy habitually would go online, harass women, say they needed to be raped. He would threaten women. He would do all kinds of stuff. Does that sound like productive activity? Does that sound like the stuff that builds and makes for a better society? No. He was literally trying to tear down women online. Now, I'm about to make another controversial uh, statement. I analyze a lot of YouTube channels. And I'm about to say something that if I made a YouTube channel that was mocking women, pointing out the flaws of women, or talking about the delusion of women, my channel would take off. Darius M, all he talks about is how delusional these women are and the things that men need to do to protect themselves from the delusion of women. I'm about to say something extremely controversial. The average woman cannot be a whore. The average woman cannot sleep with multiple women, men at the same time. Now, are there sluts and whores who can sleep with 10 dudes in one day? Absolutely. Absolutely. But the average mentally healthy woman cannot sleep with multiple men at the same time. She just can't do it. She just can't do it. You want to know how I know? Remember when I was doing my sugar baby research? The majority of these chicks want to be paid for their company and they don't want to have sex. And what I saw during my research phase with these women would cycle on the website and they would cycle off because mentally they could not do what a sugar baby would do. You know what a sugar baby is? She's a she's an employee. She's a paid prostitute. And the average woman, once she realizes what goes on, she can't do it. Now compare this and contrast this with all of the MGTO channels, all of the Darius M's, the Coach Greg Adams, all of these channels of men talking about women, you would believe that the average woman is a whore. That's what they would have you believing. And I know from a fact 
that the average woman, mentally healthy, well-adjusted woman, she can't do it. She can't do it. This is why the mentally healthy average woman wants a relationship with one man. I know women that have not had sex in two, three years because they're not in a relationship. But once again, listening to the internet, listening to all of these dating coaches, and the average woman is a whore and she's a slut. She's a whore and she's a slut. And this is the belief. This is the belief with no proof. And one of the things is, it's one thing to have a belief it's another thing to do research to back up that belief. I've had to adjust some of my thoughts and perspectives based upon gathering new information. I originally thought the recession was gonna hit um, December, January, but based upon new and current research and information, the recession's gonna hit second quarter of this year. So, if you're researching and validating your hypothesis from a truth, from a perspective of truth and facts, if you get new information, it's going to Malcolm X changed his mind. Martin Luther King changed his mind. They got new information. But once again, the Darius M's of the world, the coach Greg Adams, they're not looking for new information. They're looking for an echo chamber that is based in the beginning stages of mental illness. It is not mentally healthy to want to be by yourself. There's a few people who are extreme introverts who can be by themselves. You know, there was a story of a man who left society for 30 years and went and lived in the woods. This man had to be an extreme introvert because you want to know why? Solitary confinement is a controversial prison tactic because if you take someone who is not an extreme introvert and take them away from the population and throw them in isolation, within a matter of months, these people start to mentally break down. So for the average, well-adjusted, mentally healthy person, being away from the herd, being alone, is the path to mental illness. And this is why America is manufacturing these people because number one, the belief factory. We have this belief and we're gonna push this belief. I'm gonna tell you something and I'm not gonna tell you exactly what it is because I may do something similar, but if you're experiencing ED or rectal dysfunction or your stuff ain't jumping the way it did, there's something that's called the five G's. And this is something I've known about because I'm, I'm a horn dog. And I was doing stuff to enhance my erections even when I didn't have problems because some of this stuff will make your dick bigger, right? And I knew about the five G's 12 years, 12, 15 years, right? And I saw a YouTube commercial talking about the five G's and this is the power of belief because the way that they framed it, it was like, because essentially these herbs do work. They do work. Because if you don't have problems, they make your stuff like, I, I'm gonna share that when I was on my 5G regimen, I can come and not lose my erection. That's how good this stuff was, right? And what would happen is you could come in five, 10 minutes, you'd be ready to go again. Once the, you know, once you, you get that sensitivity stopped down then you can hit it again, right? So one of the things that I have come to understand is media and blogs and podcasts with a, an agenda. And an agenda by itself is not a bad thing. I have an agenda, everyone on YouTube has an agenda. Some of these agendas are well-based, uh, trying to help people and they're good. And some of these agendas are nefarious. So what we have is an incel community. 
What we have is a red pill community. What we have is, like, once again, I know a lot of people are gonna take exception with that because I ride and die with red pill! Throwing up red pill gang signs, right? And the fact that I would even suggest that this is the beginning stages of mental illness is gonna offend a lot of people. And I really don't care because what we're having, and this is why the number of mass shootings is getting ready to explode, is we have all of these factories of belief peddlers of a certain kind of belief, because this is America. If you wanted to t say that dog doo-doo cured cancer, if you put enough money behind dog doo-doo and enough marketing dollars, you would have a number of people believe that dog doo-doo would cure cancer. That's how powerful marketing is. And see, this is what's happening. We have these beliefs that are marketed it that are not like, once again, when I was a kid, there was this product that made millions and millions of dollars. You know what it was called? The pet rock. There were people who were ordering this pet rock, I think it was 1999 from television, a rock that was no different than if they went outside their house and looked in the ground, they would see a similar rock. They made millions off of the pet rock, millions. Another thing, remember Suzanne Summers, Christy from Three's Company and this ad machine she had? That company made hundreds of millions of dollars one problem it didn't work didn't matter Suzanne some uh, I think it was the thigh master the thigh master see what they did is they took it and they did some research and they got a little improvement once again you if you could take let's say something let's say you use the thigh master and on a scale of 1 to 100 it gives you a 6% advantage out of 100, right? That's all they need. And they take that and they put marketing dollars behind this belief and this fuzzy research and they push it and they push it and they push it. And the next thing you know, I, I haven't looked it up, but I look it up, but I think the Thought Master made like three, four, 500 million. And this was a product that sold for 1999. If you would look um, over the years, there was Thigh Masters, there were several things that were sold on television that were literally in so many American homes that did not work. I will tell you, there's a company you can still look up. It actually does work. How many remember the Solo Flex? That company's still in business. That company still makes about two, three million a month, the Solo Flex. But what you're seeing is People are operating on the belief system. And look at Logan Paul, what he operates on. He makes a lot of money. And, you know, there's the podcast, the million dollars of gain, million dollars worth of gain. It's pure, unadulterated entertainment. So we have, and th this is one of the biggest things. Going back to you know what happened to me in these in October, these people, and I this and this is one of the things I did some criminal minds profiling. These people are broke, and I'm gonna tell you why they're broke. They have no money in the bank. The the people who left all these crazy comments, I guarantee you, all of them were broke. Not one of them had a thousand dollars in the bank, and I'm gonna tell you why. Your money is where your attention is. And if you are what's called a messy person that likes drama, gossip, you, you know all of Michael Jordan's stats, right? But you don't know your ki what's your kid's report card. That's what I'm talking about. You got people who know everything about Michael Jordan, know everything about Nicki Minaj, know everything about Cardi B, but they can't tell you what's going on in their children's lives. These are the people I'm talking about. These are the people who are messy, they live for drama, and what's gonna happen is these people are gonna be the first ones to get globally reset. 
They're going to be the first ones. But one of the reasons it was so easy for me to just stand, because, you know, a lot of people left comments. It's like, man, you still going like ain't nothing happening. I'm going to say something. Why would I care about the opinions of worthless, unaccomplished people who ain't done shit in life? Why would I care about these, these people's opinions? Why would I care about the, these people's opinions of someone who's next, next few years is maybe homeless? Why would I care about these people? Because this is one of the reasons that I stay on point and I stay on my purpose is I know what happens once you get distracted. And a lot of these people live in a state of perpetual distraction. They can't focus, they can't read a book. And this is one of the reasons that, like, I've looked at it. If I wanted to create a men's channel that was popping, all I have to do is talk bad about women. And I'm gonna tell you why these women like men talking bad about women. I went through a process, and this is a process that the average man runs from. I went through a process and I was like, how can I, looking like this, get bad chicks? What do I have to do to enable myself to get with the woman that I wanted versus just the women who wanted me? Let me say that again. There's a difference between being with a woman you want to be with and being with a woman who just wants you because I've seen this all the time. So one of the things that happens, like uh, I love my girlfriend. I love to do, I love spoiling her. I love doing nice things for her because I want to be with her. She's what I want. See, if you with someone that you feel like you settled, it's very easy to cheat on that person. It's very easy to mistreat this person. And the average man wants what Chad, Tyrone have from a natural perspective. I mean, there are men who look so good, they can literally walk in the club tonight, nod at a chick and be fucking that chick in the bathroom in five minutes. because. She likes him. She likes his look. She likes his print. She likes his shoes. And the incels and the mentally ill, because this is a lesson for the kids of the 60s and 70s and 80s. We learned that there were people who were better than us. And we learned that's life. But when you have all of these echo chambers in these mental, the beginning stages of mental illness, like I said, right now you got to do this fat, has a minimum wage job, and he, for the life of him, cannot figure out why that pretty little thing don't want nothing to do with him. So he's fat, he's got dirty fingernails, he, he doesn't do good grooming, and he feels that just as he is, that pretty, gorgeous, sophisticated women should want to be with him for his sexual abilities. He cannot figure it out. And he's mad. He ain't just mad. He big mad. And this is one, and this is the dude, and this is one of the reasons a lot of women are very hesitant to tell men the truth because they never know how the man's gonna respond. I remember years ago, I cracked on this chick. She was on a scale of 110, on a scale of one to ten, she was 12. And I cracked on her hard. I did some Alan Roger Curry stuff. And she said, boo, no. And I was like, it's a no. She said, it's a no. I was like, okay. And I just went down the bar and got my drink. And then another chick who came in who was cute, but not as bad as she was, I hit my shot at her. And she was like, okay. And then the first chick actually saw me she actually saw me crack on this second chick. And the second chick went to the bathroom and the first chick came over and she said, here's my number. Call me when you had time. See, women live in a state of perpetual fear because they don't know how men are gonna to react to them being honest. 
And this is why the average woman is very hesitant to turn down a guy hard, turn down a guy hard because she doesn't know if she's dealing with a mentally well-adjusted man or a man that's in the beginning stages of mental illness. I've actually seen this. Seen the guy crack on the girl at the gas station. She said no. He's like, bitch, you ain't that fun. This is where we're now. This behavior has gotten out of hand. This behavior has become insane. So you got women around here who like don't know what they're dealing with. Just like when we approach a woman, we don't know what we're dealing with. They don't know what they're dealing with. And there's a lot of mentally ill men in the beginning stages of mental illness who cannot deal with rejection. And Alan Roger Curry and I, we talked about this. The average man is so scared of rejection. I'm about to give you some game. If you as a man has the courage to physically approach a woman and shoot your shot 15 times a month, that's half the month, your dating life and your sex life will dramatically improve. Just doing that, nothing else. But the average man is such a bitch ass pussy. Oh, she turned me down. Oh. When that chick turned me down, it didn't dampen my enthusiasm. It didn't do shit to my esteem. I was like, all right, next. That's where I was. And then the fact that she could turn me down and she saw me crack on another woman and she saw me get that woman actually turned her on. See, this is one of the things that you weak, moist, mentally ass, bitch ass men don't know is this is something you learn in sales. I've had to call people 10, 12 times to get one appointment. Perseverance, dedication, preparation, and endurance will take you far. But because you are so weak and you're so fragile, you cannot deal with just a little adversity. If the worst thing that happened to you today is a woman that you approached told you no, you, you good, you Gucci, you Gucci. But a lot of you are so weak. A lot of you are so weak. So what you look for are these echo chambers to echo your, your loser sentiment in life. And this is why in America, we have a breeding ground, a breeding ground of upcoming mass shooters. We're breeding them left and right because these, number one, they're operating on fundamentally flawed beliefs. They're not researching their beliefs. They're not trying to educate themselves. They're not trying to better themselves. They're not trying to build themselves. They're going to go to these echo chambers and there's a ton of echo chambers. I'll recently give you an example. And this is something that happened. Um, Bronny James went to the prom with a fine ass white girl. Bronny James is the son of LeBron, LeBron James and he went to, she's a hot little blonde. And the internet lost his mind and Dr. Umar Johnson weighed in. She, he shouldn't have taken this white girl to the prom. He should have found him some black girl. And then Shannon Sharp weighed in on it and Twitter roasted Shannon Sharp. Now let's talk about that. You broke, you have no money in the bank. You've saved no money for retirement. You're struggling and you're actively involved in a conversation that a young, rich black man, Bronny James is rich because LeBron James is rich. You've devoted so much time and energy that this young man took a white girl to his prom while your life is literally on fire. Think about that. Where you invest your time and energy is where your money is. This is it like people lost their minds and this is a big conversation. Another thing, um, the death of Kevin Samuels. People have been losing their minds and you know, uh, there was something about the chick was with him, had something to do with his death and these conspiracy theories. And like I said, and I said this before, there ain't no way in hell 
with the views that Kevin Samuels was getting that he had no money. I would estimate Kevin Samuels YouTube money to be at 100 to maybe 200,000 per month. And that's just an estimate. It could be more than that. I don't even know what kind of brand deals and I, I have no clue what Kevin had saying going on, but I could say with a hundred percent certainty that Kevin Samuels did not die broke, but I know the YouTube game. I, I've got YouTube friends who make a million a month and they were getting Kevin Samuels views. Actually, they were getting more, they were getting more, but once again, they were in a different um, niche. So right now you have people who are deeply, deeply invested in the death of Kevin Samuels. And these people, if they had a $500 emergency pop up in their life, they would be in trouble. But they, every morning they wake up, Kevin Samuels, what's going on with the Kevin Samuels? The, and this right here, and that belief, and that behavior, and that activity is why we have a breeding ground for mass shooters. That people get to the point where they'll wake up one morning with that thought in their head, I'm gonna kill somebody today. And they go out and do it. They go out and do it because these people are living in a framework of disillusion, dissent, and once again, if you go back to all of the mass shooters and the people who killed them, all of their lives were trash. All of them were trash. All of them. They weren't in relationships. They didn't have a good home life. And these elements and variables are starting to be replicated because right now, if you are a parent to prevent your child, now once again, I'm gonna say something that may be controversial. There are some people who are just born fucked up. Had nothing to do with the parent. They just came out the womb and they were fucked up. But we have a culture that creates these people. And we're creating these people in record numbers because of all of the factors. And you know, a lot of people, I, you know, a lot of people were like, well, gun shows, gun checks and stuff. I know in the state of Georgia that I, I have guns. And if I wanted to sell my gun to someone else, I put an ad online that, hey, I'm selling my gun. I can sell it and don't have to do a background check. And Georgia ain't the only state that you can do that legally. But once again, once the mass shootings and the bodies really start to pile up, maybe I'm wrong. Hopefully I'm wrong. But we start having three mass shooting events per week. You will see legislation because here's the thing. In the UK, they have extremely strict gun regulation and they have way less mass shootings. Germany, they have strict gun regulation. They have way less, well, once again, they have less shootings, period. So at some point, the pain in America is gonna get so great that we're gonna to have to adopt these measures of these other countries that we could statistically look back and say, okay, they didn't have these legislations and rules in effect here. And they were having shootings and they were having all this stuff. Then they enacted these rules and reg legis legislation here. And since then, shootings have dropped. Mass shootings have almost disappeared. You can argue with the philosophy, but you can't argue with the results. They have less mass shootings. They still have some. And then you go to countries uh, that are buck wild. To me, Mexico is buck wild. Now, I will say something about Mexico. Real Mexican women, because what we see here are women from El Salvador, Guatemala. Real Mexican women are fucking gorgeous. <laughs> I remember the first time I saw a real Mexican woman. I was flying to Hawaii and I had a four hour, five hour layover. And for some reason I got on an LA transit bus and I saw some real Mexican girls. And I was like, God damn, these bitches are beautiful. First time I saw a real Mexican. So real Mexican women are absolutely drop dead gorgeous. And 
that that's a whole nother video but we have these echo chambers we have these belief systems we have these amplification systems of ideals and this is why we're producing the mass shooters and right now because of the disintegration of the family and once again i had some people it's like you know talking about marriage it's like oh god don't get married don't get married don't get married even though the proof you, you can argue with the philosophy but you can't argue with the results and um yeah so i got a playlist that i'm putting these new videos on check it out check it out let me know your thoughts and opinions and i will see you guys in the next one all righty